Welcome children to the video lectures of Social Science Standard 9. This is the third video lecture of your chapter number 12, Indian Democracy. In the previous chapter, we saw about the role of media into opinion in the democracy. We saw about print media and electronic media. We also saw how it can create a strong and form public opinion at the same time. We also saw merits and demerits of electronic media and the print media also. Today we are going to see about the types of democracy. What type of democracies are there? We are going to see into this particular part of our chapter. So types of democracy. Various countries in the world have democracy. There still exists diversity within various democracies of different countries. See, there are variations into the democracy. Okay. Our country is a parliamentary democracy. Okay. Our country has a parliamentary democratic system. Remember this. Our country has a parliamentary democracy system. In a country like USA, there is presidential democracy. In USA, it says presidential democracy system. We shall de see detail about the two democratic, that is parliamentary and presidential democracy system here. The parliamentary democracy system. Our country has accepted parliamentary democracy system. In a parliamentary democracy, the president appoints the leader of the party who gets the majority number of seats in Lok Sabha as the prime minister. Okay, so the leader of the party which gets the majority of the seats becomes the prime minister. Okay, the prime minister forms the government. The parliament government is completely accountable to Lok Sabha. It has to give answers to Lok Sabha. Government remains in power as long as it enjoys the confidence of majority of the members of parliament. Okay. So in the parliamentary system, the government remains in the power until and unless the parliament supports or the Lok Sabha supports it. In simple words, until and unless a political party has 272 seats with them, they can remain into power if they score less than this then their power will be lost they will be out of the ruling power okay next is the presidential democracy presidential democracy is the second important democracy in the world it is such type of democracy that president is directly elected by the people. See, in our case, president is not elected by the people, but he is voted by the members of the parliament and the other uh, legislative bodies. Okay, while in America, the president is directly elected by the people. The president remains into the power for a specific period as mentioned in the constitution. Presidential democracy is prevalent in many countries including USA. See, there are many countries which are having it. And USA is one of the major countries which is having the presidential democracy. And presidential democracy is also very different from the parliamentary democracy that we already saw. Next is election system in democracy. How the election system is there? Okay, our country has maximum numbers of voters in the world. Okay, as ours is the second most populated country, so it is but obvious that the maximum number of voters in the world are in our country. The election commission maintains the administration, control, and monitoring of entire process of election. Okay, so election commission is the autonomous body which is responsible for conducting elections into India. It is essential for any democracy that election commission is independent, impartial and autonomous. See, 
okay and so the election commission needs to be independent it needs to work on its own impartial it doesn't need to be partial with anyone and autonomous self-ruled it is mandatory to maintain the autonomy of election commission in the constitution there is a special provision for the terms and condition of appointment of election commissioner the commissioner is the head of election commission and there are special provisions for election of the special uh, sorry election commissioner okay and that needs to be followed the criteria and service or the removal or suspension of from their services the responsibility and authority to hold elections of the parliament okay the election commission can hold the elections of the parliament the state assembly legislative council president and the vice president and rest with the election commission so election commission is responsible for the elections of the parliament state assemblies legislative council president and vice president okay the elections of our country is carried out by secret ballot okay now they are carried with the evms now they are carrying it with evms evm stands for electronic voting machine previously it was done by secret ballot means by putting a chit into a box but now it is done with electronic voting machine legislative assemblies or parliament is dissolved after five years see remember this after every five years the legislative assembly and the parliament is dissolved okay if the government stays that long if it doesn't then the elections are held in the middle also and fresh elections are held the elections carried out to elect a new candidate to fill up vacant place due to the death of resignation of candidate is known as by elections remember this what is by election then elections held to fill the place which has become vacant which has become empty due to the death or resignation of a candidate is known as by election sometime it happens that a candidate is elected on a seat then by any means he becomes or he resigns from his post or he is dead then that place becomes empty it becomes vacant so elections are to be held for getting that place again so that are known as by elections the date of elections advertisement filing and scrutinizing the nomination form the dates of withdrawal and nomination forms the declaration of final list of eligible candidates the allotment of election symbols falls under the working area of the elections commission okay now see this are the process first the dates are declared then the advertisement of it is published into various newspapers then digital media and so on then filing of the nominations papers are done those we people who want to contest the election they need to file the nomination papers later on the scrutinizing is done scrutinizing means checking whether the nominated forms are right whether the in information which is given is right correct etc that is called scrutiny it is done the dates of the withdrawal of the nomination form is declared if any person wants to withdraw the form then he can withdraw a form till the date given okay after the date is then the declaration of final list is done okay that this many people are contesting the election and this is the final list of the elected eligible candidate okay sometime it happens that if the nomination forms or the details in nomination forms are not correct then also your nomination form can be cancelled okay then the allotment of election symbol now every party has a particular election symbol but there are independent candidates who do not belong to any political parties then they have election symbols allotted by the election commission now which type of election symbols are allotted because okay, they are very simple things from common day to day use are given as election symbols and mostly they are a uh, very single drawing simple drawing so that the illiterate common people also can identify those election symbols and they can vote for it so this is the way of the elections process which is conducted by the election commission later on the elections are held 
end the announcement or date okay from the time of the announcement or date a protocol is implemented by the election commission okay from that announcement of the date a protocol protocol means a type of uh, you can say a strict rules and regulated uh, 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 guided time frame or conditions is implemented it is known as achar sahita in gujarati in simple words no government transfers works or things can be done after the elect dates are declared okay so that is the protocol that has to be followed the government is bound to abide by the protocol the government has to follow the protocol and cannot carry out any activity or campaign that can affect the public opinion they cannot declare uh, any thing any beneficial scheme after the date of elections are declared okay so they have to follow it if they don't follow then election commission can take strict actions against them the candidates and the political parties come up with their own election manifesto so manifesto means their agenda they say that if we will win then we will give you 15 lakh rupees and we we will do this and we will do that and we will provide free food to you and we will provide everything all kind of promises are being uh, given into the election manifestos the election manifestos reflect the proposed plans the proposed plan of the work of the party in terms of economic defense foreign policies and various other problems so in this way every political party come up with a election manifesto and that is a very important point in the election process next comes secret ballot in democracy as i told you told you secret ballot is the way in which which we uh, do our election process okay so in our country election process are conducted in a complete independent and secret manner in the parliament elections are considered to a largest election process in the world it is one of the largest process various political parties organization and independent candidate contest the elections each of them present their work ideas and future plans to the voters it is expected that the voters vote without any benefit greed or fear say they should ban vote without benefit greed or fear secret ballot is given utmost importance in democracy secret ballot is the most important thing a voter has a right to maintain secrecy secrecy means he can he has to vote secretly at the same time he has a right not to tell anyone whom he has vote no one can ask a voter regarding the vote the amazing process of election many maintain the secrecy of each voter's vote the election commission facilitates the voting of all the person involved with vo- election process as well as the army personnel each and every person who is involved in the election process also has the right to vote and all the army personnel who are doing their duty on the border also has the right to vote and there is a system with which that is known as uh, postal voting with which we can they can uh, give a vote see there are two process used for voting one is vote by ballot paper second is vote by electronic voting machine or evm mostly now the voting is done through evms okay counting ballot paper is more time consuming why it is to be done manually while nowadays evms are used because evm are directly connected to a computer and the counting can be done faster counting vote in evm is less time consuming see counting is less time consuming it saves time and labor voting by using evm is environmental friendly also because it doesn't waste any paper as it does not make use of paper if voter decides to exercise his right vote but does not want to cast a vote in favor of any contest in elections he can use a optional nota nota is none of the above okay now this is a very important thing that you need to understand if a voter decide to exercise his right means he wants to vote but he doesn't want to vote any of the person right he says that i don't want to vote i want to give my vote but i don't want to give vote to this all people who are standing in the elections then he can give a vote then there is an option of nota n o t a nota stands for none of the above he can put his vote into it means his vote will be counted but that vote won't go to any of the candidate who is standing into the election and that will be counted 
separate so many uh, people are also using this particular options next important topic is democracy and political parties India is a multi-party democracy means there are more than one parties and hence we have various political parties specific criteria are fixed by election commission for validating any political party okay? there are criteria which helps the parties to regain its position political parties are classified either as national party or regional party so there are two types of parties national party and regional party party based on specific policies and criteria decided by the election commission as per this a party that secures more than four percentage of vote in the previous general elections in last four at least four major state is identified national party okay a national party a party which gets at least okay which get at least four percentage vote in minimum four states is termed as a national party in a general election general elections are held every five years so a party who has contended election in at least four states and have got at least four percentage vote in those all the states is termed as a national party and rest are identified as regional parties okay as per the information given by election commission on march 10 2014 a total of 1592 national parties were registered see how many 1593 national parties are there last year 290 parties were added more so you can see the number increasing day by day in our country indian national congress and bharatiya janata party are two major political parties we know this two as main inc that is indian national congress and bharatiya janata party is the two major parties in india along with it bahujan samaj party that is bsp communist party of india cpim marxist and national congress party ncp and other parties are also there apart from this shiv sena trinamool congress samajwadi party dravida munra kalgam that is dmk and all india din anna dravida munra kalgam that is aia dmk and aam aadmi party ai aap janata dal united jdu rashtriya janata dal that is rjd are regional party so this all are regional parties you can see this all belongs to the regional party criteria and they are active in their own regions based on the specific criteria any national party can lose its status of or any regional party can gain the status so if a national party doesn't get proper votes then he can be termed as the local party and a local party if gets more votes then it can be allotted the national party status the national party depends on the number of voters obtained by the party the party forming the government is known as the ruling party okay so the party which forms the government is known as the ruling party the party which form the opposition is called the opposition party okay the opposition party helps the form of public opinion democratically and opposes the objectional plans and policies of the government now what is opposition party does then it opposes the a ruling party in many ways which it thinks that that are not good for the people but in a healthy democracy it is desirable that the opposition party supports the social and political causes of ruling party which are aimed at the welfare of the nation okay it is supposed that the opposition party should support the ruling party in most ways where the people are concerned but it is not done into reality the success of democracy depends on a balanced relation between the ruling and opposition party okay it should be between the ruling and opposition party effective and strong opposition party is a prerequisite of good democracy without a strong opposition party the democracy won't be a democracy it will be more of a dictatorship democracy is like a chariot ruling party and opposition party
are parties are two wheels of the democracy and without them it is hard to follow the democracy so without the opposition party democracy cannot exist democracy will not be into existence so you can say that that's why it is considered as a chariot so democracy is a chariot this is a question asked and ruling party and opposition party are two wheels of the same chariot okay so for a smooth running and better running of the democracy demo the opposition party is also needed at the same time ruling party is also needed so with this we complete our chapter here read the chapter well go through all the video lectures and understand the topic in the most beneficial way